Yo, what is going on guys? Jiri Mago here, and welcome back to some more The Letter. Last time we left off, we cons uh, confirmed some of our suspicions about um, Marianne, at the very least, having somebody in her past who she loved. Um, so I had initially assumed that Hannah was this girl that Hannah had had a crush on in her past, but it turns out that it's just that Hannah looks a lot like the girl. Um, I know that the girl had some weird name that I, I'm not gonna be able to remember, but um, yeah, so she had gone to like, like this all girls school with her and she was like the only girl that actually was really friends with Marianne. Uh, and so over time, they both kind of had mutual feelings for each other. But in a kind of Tennessee Williams cat on a hot tin roof twist, when the other girl confessed to Marianne, Marianne pretty much like ignored her and turned her down, essentially, because I believe that the school was like a religious kind of school. So she was obviously, you know, not thinking that that was, she was like, oh, that's impure, that's not right kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, and the girl ended up killing herself. That was, that was the big thing. I think she jumped out of a, uh, some kind of building window and killed herself. I mean, it's literally just like, you know, cat on a hot tin roof, so... But, uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump right on back into where we left off at. Alright, what were we talking about? Uh, yeah, so I think that we were just talking about... Oh, yeah, the, um... We had a nightmare with Hannah and Lorraine right here. Okay. Maybe it's better that I don't remember. Ah, oh, God, the voice... Good morning, Beruthiel. Ber Beruthiel, who's a good kitty. Are you hungry? Is that why you woke me up? <coughs> a content purr comes from my sweet dear before she jumps off the bed and trots toward the kitchen. On the other hand, it takes me a bit more before I roll out of bed and start my day. Mornings before work is always quite a f is always a quiet affair. Showers first, then a mug of coffee and a bowl of oats. Sometimes I do stretches, and I always check my work email. The rights will be moving into the mansion today. I don't think the paperwork is officially done yet, but it isn't too far-fetched to think that they were allowed to start their move, despite that. Rich people like them always find will always find ways to get what they want, after all. I'll believe in you again today, Bet, so you have to behave and make sure not to shred out my new covers, okay? Don't worry, I didn't forget. Tomorrow's Black Cat Day, so I'll show you a party. But only if you behave like a proper lady. She barely gives me a glance as I say that before going back to her own food. Cats. Still better than humans, most of the time. Too bad I have to work with humans. The place is already busy as soon as I get here. The foreman, one that I've recommended to the right for his work, for his work ethic, is clearly eh, is early as usual. Already he's instructing men here and there with the bigger loads. I have no chance to talk to him as Miss Wright appears and greets me with a smile. Miss Wright, I hope everything has been to your liking thus far. Good morning, Marianne. It has been delightful, and these men have been very helpful. Look at all this. It's so busy here. I'm getting tired just looking in, looking at them go. No complications so far with the movers at the previous owners of the mansion, I hope. If anything, the only one big one being problematic is Luke, if I'm being honest. He can be such a diva, but I do like that about him. She stops looking up at the upper landing where Mr. Wright comes through with two other movers and the mirror from the study. Oh, do be careful with that mirror. We wouldn't want anyone getting hurt because of broken glass. Why even having it carried around? Oh? Hmm. You did say you didn't want the mirror, and I keep getting distracted by it. If I'm going to turn the study into my office, I'd rather not have it there. Where can we put this? Well, you're not putting it in our room. Why don't you go, I don't know, put it in the wine cellar for now. We can figure out if we'll store it in the attic or somewhere else later, yes? You you heard a voice. To the cellar it goes. Mush. <laughs> the movers bring down the mirror one step at a time, no matter how much the man tells them to hurry. An unsettling feeling grows in my stomach as I see our reflection in the bloody thing. And I look away, not wishing to risk anything. If I see Lorraine's image in the mirror now, I wouldn't know what to do. 
I don't have the luxury of privacy right now, and I'm not going to break down in front of all these people. Story updated. Alright. Let's see what our relationship was. Okay, it doesn't look like anything's changed quite yet on that. Journal? A bunch of new stuff. Uh, Alright. So... We, again, that's I, I like how all the, all the stories are kind of tying in together. Because remember that... I think... I forget who it was. It might have been Hannah. I'm pretty sure it was Hannah, but... Later on in the story... Hannah was the one who checked in the wine cellar where this supposedly, like, haunted mirror was. So, that that kind of means that she maybe indirectly caused herself to be haunted? Or possessed, maybe? Miss Wright only shakes her head and laughs at her husband's antics as they take the mirror out of here. He's back and at it again soon enough, pointing the men here and there. I'd say he's the man with the plan, but it sort of interferes with the layout and design that we've agreed upon before. I'm about to point it out, but... It's better you let him realize his mistakes on his own, rather than tell him off them. Rather than tell him off them. That way you don't get blamed for his actions. It's more fun, too, to tell him. Uh, how do they say it? I told you so once he slips up. Been working with him long enough to know that, huh? It's not like I plan to make too much of a fuss, unless what he changes is actually crucial. It happens often enough when one is made to accompany him nearly all hours of the day. Up higher. Come on now. Still, he could at least be less pushy about things. Careful now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you make. It is surprising how hands-on he is compared to my usual clientele. Well, both of them are, actually. It's refreshing to have them participate, despite their initial reluctance. Luke, do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry, buttercup. Careful, that is mahog- No, no, you put that down! You do not manhandle in a Napoleon Abouvard! He really needs to tone down the dramatics a notch. Miss Wright and the butler look like they're used to it by now. But the rest of us? Well... Sweetie, why don't we go up and sort your suits upstairs? Let your harness Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We've got this, Mr. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel burst. Bloodstains are so troublesome to clean. There's an obvious sense of relief as Mr. Wright is dragged out of the room, leaving the movers to do their work in peace. Some grumbling even comes from one of the younger workers. It's a good thing the family butler isn't some blindly loyal tool tool to his boss, or there'll be trouble with Mr. Wright. He is such a bratwurst, whiny baby who never got enough hugs from his mutter. Oh, is he German? <laughs> I, guess, I guess he's German. Okay. I guess he'll have a German accent from now on. Probably lost in translation, and not that I'm condoning talking about someone behind their back, but I think you meant to call Mr. Wright a horrible brat. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's that too. There are lots of things I can call him, but I mean to say that he's a big weenie. A childish name for a chi childish person. Like a child, he whines when he doesn't get what he wants, and he breaks the toys that he has. <laughs> that gets a laugh from me, as well as a few of the movers who linger near. He and I carry boxes, instructing the movers where they should be, and generally taking over Mr. Mr. Wright's work. He goes off without a hitch, and the man is helpful, efficient, and capable with physical labor. Despite his clean-cut appearance. A gentleman to boot, taking boxes from me when he sees me struggling with them. Speaking of boxes... Hey, the one out of boxes from the kitchen is missing. Has anyone seen it? The one with the pots and knives? The broadverse had it brought upstairs, thinking it was for the attic. Why would he... Oh, never mind. I'll go get it. Why even bring a box of pots and knives to the attic? That man is ridiculous. There's probably no point in making sense of what he does if he does them just because he can. At least it turns out that I don't have to make it all the way up to the attic. The mover, probably on Mr. Wright's orders, left the box on the stairs. At least it's not that heavy. I managed to hoist it up without too much effort, but the time it takes me to do so is long enough for me to overhear an odd conversation I could, never in my life, imagine coming from a couple like the Wrights. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home! 
and soon enough, one day, you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shut up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. True, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. But what about the wet dog smell? It's a mess. I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. For once, I'll have to agree with Whiskey on this one. Though I can live with Miss Wright's with Miss Wright being a dog person. But as amusing as this conversation might get, I really shouldn't be caught eavesdropping or slacking off on the job. At most, I should be looking at possible at ways of possibly soundproofing certain rooms, perhaps bringing it up if they don't realize the lack of it. I really should. Ooh! Alright, what are we what are we gonna do? I can't remember exactly how this scene was playing out when we were playing as Hannah. So I don't know if one of them comes out of the room. But worst case scenario, I mean, we get caught by Johannes. You know what? I realize how much of a dumbass I am. Of course he's not fucking British. His name is Johannes. Jesus. Alright, anyways, <laughs> we're gonna keep listening. I don't usually care for the private affairs of my clients. As I consider if I should lurk a little longer, I miss what else he said. All I know is that the topic has somehow moved on from pets to children. What? I... I wasn't being serious. It's not something you can take the piss out of. Having a kid is a big responsibility, Hannah. We've talked about this, haven't we? We... I'm not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing the little brat by the week's end. The regret sinks in fast. Why can't I just keep to myself and mind my own business like I usually do? Of all the times, I'd be curious. Lorraine, bless her soul, once told me that there are three things I shouldn't do unless I want to be on the shit list of the social elites. First, don't mess with their livelihood. Whatever business they've made... Excuse me. Whatever business that they've made them and keeps them rich... Oh, whatever business that they've made and keeps them rich is something they need to protect. Whether it's some multi-million company or some sort of state secret, they keep that close to their chest. Businesses that challenge legal matters and moral issues aside, unless they profited from criminal conduct, it's best to see your way and avoid being their competition. Second, don't mess with their affairs, especially the married sort. It's messy business just to even gossip about it. <clears throat> and worse, to actually be the other woman? I'm towing the line with this rule as it is because of whiskey. And the third thing? Of all the times to be as sharp as a beach ball and as slow as a slot, Marianne. Well... The third thing rings true for just about anyone. Really, don't mess with their family. Of course, you use the word mess quite loosely, and I think that what I'm doing now falls under the multiple definitions it could take. Listening to this, something so undoubtedly private, is a great way to get in trouble. Kylie likes you well enough. Yes, well, it's Kylie. The tyke likes everybody and, on the off chance she doesn't, likes him well enough as long as they buy her sweets. And sure, that kid is great, but if I get tired of her, I can ship her back to her father at the end of the day. Having kids of our own would be a completely different monster entirely. I think you'll be- I think you'll be a great father. I walk away as far as and as, and as fast as I can while still carrying the box, until I'm a good distance off in the foyer. I even risk my neck, taking the steps down two at a time before quickly handing off the kitchenware to Johannes. You really shouldn't run down those stairs. You might sleep and break your neck. That isn't a pretty way to go. I'll keep that in mind, thanks. You wouldn't want anything to happen to my pretty neck. Why do you think I wear a scarf? Because they're comfortable. Other than that, they're seriously choking hazards. You might be wearing your own noose. Cut the marbit stuff and let's get these things where they belong. My kitchen, my rules. If you have somewhere else to go, which I'm sure you have, you may leave the area to me. Well, I still have to check a few things. I still have to check a few things there, if you don't mind. How many times do you need to check every room? Are you sure you're not just looking for the secret recipe of the cur Kirby soup? I don't know how to pronounce that. Because I'll have you know it's all in my head. I like to be thorough with my work. I'm sure you understand. He shrugs as we enter the kitchen. The box is quickly placed on one of the countertops, and he sets to work quietly. Occasionally, he would ask me to take one thing or another and place it somewhere else, but for the most part, I'm left thinking about what I just heard. That talk of children and Miss Wright's insistence on getting that room. Could it be? No, 
she doesn't look it. But of course, it could be just too early to show. Ah, so we're speculating that she's pregnant. Huh. I mean, I don't think she is, just because throughout, like, when we were playing as Hannah, there was zero indication that that could be the case. Although I do remember a time when we were, like, throwing up in the, to uh, in the toilet, but I forget if that's because we were, like, hung over or not. But obviously, you know, I do believe that's a sign of pregnancy, so maybe that is the case. And if she is, does Whiskey know? It really didn't sound like it. What do I care, though? Oh, aside from the fact that I may be working with a pregnant woman who will have a baby in the near future, and this place isn't exactly up to modern safety standards, the slightest possibility that this might be the case only makes me worry. I'll have to do a better job than what I usually do. Well, if anything, even if that's not true, it is definitely displaying how we are kind of taking those extra steps for the sake of Hannah. So clearly, subconsciously, we are kind of showing a bias almost towards Hannah, right? Like, oh, well, I heard that, overheard this conversation. Maybe she's pregnant, so I guess I should do a better job to get this place up to, you know, the safety standards that would be appropriate for children running around the house. The movers work efficiently even when they're left alone, and they do quick work of their responsibilities. The head foreman comes, standing in the doorway, to consult me on this or that, and I have to get help, and I have to get help out every now and then. I have to go help out, my bad. But they pretty much have everything up to standards. They skip lunch entirely, not even realize when they do so. Nevertheless, all is well as the butler gets to heating up the leftover bubble and squeak from breakfast, and makes a generous brat batch of fish and chips for them. Most likely simple in comparison to what he serves to the rights, but well done nonetheless. That smells good. Want, want to wrap up? Yeah. Want to wrap up some for me to go? It's an idle observation more than anything. My thoughts, as they are, preoccupy me. If there are any left. If one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves him. Even my husband, and he's American. I really do hate getting so up and close and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. It's obvious to me that I've got my priorities all wrong when I can't help but think about what I heard, what I learned about the right couple. These things have a way of creeping up on a person. Thoughts, ideas, whether they're fact or fiction. They creep up and fester, crawl and writhe in a way that twists. I hear giggling, delighted and mocking. They creep up and... The sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arm causes me to freeze and hiss. Don't! I half expect her to be there. <laughs> oh, I screamed that. Let me redo that. Don't! There you go. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder. It's just me, quiet down before you break glass. But it's just whiskey. Don't do that again. Ever. I don't like being scared. Though I don't believe in the likes of spooks. Being startled is not on the top of is not on top of the likes there. Is not on top of the list of things a Marianne liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach, or he would have gotten on friendly terms with something, like a rolling pin. What was this that with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has <laughs> Johannes been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, Brother Grimm? The butler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rites, aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there, though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. The expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost... cruel. But neither of them spoke, just as Johannes leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just... telling about all the urban legends that the Movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell him you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. 
It would be a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing, a dead person isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means that there would be no such things as ghosts and ghoul- It would mean that there would be such things as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around. If you could excuse my insane question, Mr. Wright, have you noticed anything weird here? A simple enough question on the surface, yet I notice the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't watching his reaction intently, but in his eyes I see something... dangerous. That depends on your definition of the word weird. I was still on the topic of this place being haunted. Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, maybe not, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men trapezing around, touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anything strange while you were here before? While you were here? Because you must report it to Johannes and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess I imagine this is strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women looking, lurking about then. A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over well. None that I know of, but I'll inform Johannes immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, and you want suspicious and you report it immediately. I think that goes without saying. The concern he ha the concern he have on the Oh the concern he has that's a typo on their part, on the talk of security is quickly gone. His arrogant, smug smirk returns, if a bit subdued. Whatever smarmy remark or innuendo he has at the ready never comes through, as voices from the dining hall ring out. So, is this a full-time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly. For magazines, newspapers, and events, so you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least not all the time. That would be the magazine photographer, I presume. As always, Miss Wright talks in such a kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photographer, too. Hearing them, though, seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least if his small scowl is anything to go by. Is he... jealous? Ah! Alright. Ah, <sighs> fuck. Here's my thing, right? The relationship between Hannah and Luke is just so fucked up, right? Because, again, like we learned with Hannah, the reason that she's so uppity and cheery all the time is because she essentially craves attention. So she's basically an attention whore, to put it bluntly. At the same time, though, it's kind of hard to tell whether Luke genuinely loves her or not, because at times, like this and the time when she was, like, puking in the toilet, he can, he does seem to show genuine affection towards her, but at the same time, you know, he's very flirtatious. Clearly, he's cheated on her multiple times before. I mean, he even had a woman crash his party, accusing him of impregnating her. So, it's kind of hard to take a side here. Now, of course, as Marianne, I believe I mentioned last episode, I wanted to kind of hook her up with Hannah. But at the same time, I don't know if I want to match make Hannah and Marianne or if I want to try and fix the relationship between Luke and Hannah. So I'm kind of like going back and forth on this right now. <sighs> Let's try and lighten the mood. You're not going to go out there and join Miss Wright. You're starting to look strained. If you want your picture taken so badly, I'm sure the photographer would oblige. What is, what, is it, what is it that you want me to do then? Uh, what is it that you want to do then? Films. Documentaries, mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. We need to get you away from the butler. You're starting to sound like him. 
No, I'm not joining Hannah for an interior design magazine photo. What am I, a piece of furniture? Look, do the lot of you have anything else crucial to do today, Marianne? Uh, there are still uh, some little things to do. It isn't the end of the day yet. Yes, yes, but you're paid hourly, aren't you? Per day? Really, I don't care. You and the others can just take off for the day. Why is he dismissing us early all of a sudden? Is this about the possible security threat? Did my question get him all wary and paranoid that he would just send the workers in I way? I realize that threats are of actual concern to these rich and powerful people. I imagine, whether anyone wants to or not, they get a few enemies here and there. But I'm sure the foreman and his workers can be trusted and under a threat. Well, at least I trust the people I'm working with. I understand that if he doesn't, I he he un yeah, he doesn't know them from a can of paint. Still, won't it be safer if there are people around who can watch their back? You're the boss. My being paid by the day aside, I won't be held responsible for any significant delay caused by your actions. I'll try to get around that, of course, but I'll just remind you of the fact. Whatever. Take forever with the house. I don't give a bloody damn. Don't you worry. You're still getting your money. Just sod off. Go crawl around a pub and find yourself a good lay. Paranoid or aggravated as you might be, this conversation certainly didn't have to warrant that sort of remark. Maybe I will. Walking out of the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go will go while under his roof. Miss Wright and the photographer are still far too busy in conversation to notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Bluffance very much. People didn't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bebe a lot more. Going to the foyer has me stumble upon the family butler once more, who raises an eyebrow at my presence. And where are you off to in such a hurry, Miss McCullough? The foreman is looking for you. De Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, well, I don't know. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you, then. It would be... The it would be for the best if you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. My ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. Granted, there are some difficulties at first, but the driver didn't know where the, because the driver didn't know where the Ermengarde Mansion is. He tried to ha have us hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble I didn't care about, and the butler didn't understand. But as soon as we told him that it's the haunted mansion over in Anselm Village, he knew just the place. And finally headed over albeit with some hesitation. Let me check the relationship. Oh. Huh. That is interesting. So for one, our opinion with Luke went down considerably. For some reason. Well, no, it, well. Huh, that is weird. But... It's more so weird that our relationship with Hannah got affected because of that. Huh, interesting. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. He gives me willies, too. I would have loved to snap at him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossoms from the forefront of my mind. One that has somehow bothered me greatly. More than my exasperation over whiskey in this project, or wanting all of it to stop. There's been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. Worse. Worse, I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damn new Urthi. Loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago, and it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? <clears throat> Today's Tuesdays are for karaoke, and Wednesdays? Improv. Usually it's these four guys who did hilarious games. The one with Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. Though I love a good laugh, stand-up comedy isn't my thing. And without camera harana or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. Hey, G. Psst, G, come over here. I need you for something. It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. I'd probably have been kicked out of other places by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all he would do is give me an easy smile and a shake of his head, even while he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will you? You know, I'll, I'll give him an Irish accent as well. 
give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him a couple times before. Although he never talks to anyone else except G. Let me guess, it's Ash. The girls used to be all over him too, too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. Alright, alright. What is it? Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, pour the wine. I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. Uh. <laughs> A wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hope of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop, o hop over it for them. Because what little sense I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bottle from the sober man. But that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot, anyway. He smiles and shakes his head, just like I know he would, do he would before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were you? Where were we? How you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one to really chat with, I would have gone home, or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still in the Luxburn firm case. Those blokes that you talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the modern news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things, as long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down, sir. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? The talk would have interested me, would it would have kept my attention, if I gave a damn. But in my current state, I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. All those words are just buzzing, barely surfacing the sea of sounds that is the pub. And it would have stayed that way, perhaps even drowned if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright, you know the guy. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant to not know who he is. That smug blonde who likes trying around his money. He was here just a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a lot of cash on the counter having too much whiskey comes as tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Luke fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck? Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join him before I pipe up. Is this smack talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. There's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy? He starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes. She's clean. And she might be able to help you with your, ah, predicament. Of course, a drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. <laughs> I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? <laughs> See? Have a little faith in me, won't you? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off of. You're the one who was so desperate to come running to, running to me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas. Five feet eleven. Can't miss me, unlike Shorty over here. What would that mad look? You wanna dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I move directly behind him and use the top of his head as an armrest. Oh, God. But when he shakes me off, I plop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can, you can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Man, you see this giant is... She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic too. Don't see you too much recently. But I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You're at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McCullough. I'm famous interior designer and extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhymes. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't know if I can trust you. 
Even if G is such a clean, but anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients. If that's all, if that's all there is to us. You wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the bear talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then. Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. One moment he's an absolute dickhead, and then he's acting like an actual decent human being. The next, I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat eyes straight up. And I'm not saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Luke is a catch too. They both are. But I really cannot, for all the, for the love of all things holy, see how they can even work out together. So, Luke Wright. Have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar, of note? You're the one being pitied right now, Holmes. But no, nah, nothing comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich smarmy assholes and, just, and then some. A giggle bubbles up and I press my cheek against the cool countertop with my eyes shut tight just because. Eventually cracking one eye open, just in case the thought I fell asleep, I grin at Holmes. So Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look into if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she? Or how is she? <laughs> well and good. Definitely the nicer of the two. And sexy as sin to boot. Not a private detective, then. I even one of them tabloids want to know if he, Luke Wright, doesn't know how to put, on, put his pants on right. Hmm. Pants. I'd take the pants off. I'd take the pants off of... Ah, here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I have been right now. I'm asking if you notice any odd behavior from her. Odd behave you What? I wonder how she be how she'd be when she's drunk. I can just imagine her being the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't even going to take the word of a drunk. This will be dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I, co that I coerced her testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of despair that comes over the both of them is palpable. If feelings had a bad taste, it'd be bitterer than the beer, of, than the beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking. Though, thinking doesn't get me far when too much shite in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something... something... Asuk Day. No wonder Miss <laughs> Wright likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is, rotten bloke. Maybe that Sandals girl really is onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling ya. Explain why she's explains why she's so reluctant. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Before I can get another word out, there's hands on my shoulder and everything starts to spin. I quickly slap his hands away, the best I can, and send him the foulest look I can muster. Take your <coughs> hands off me, pipsqueak! I'm not a lady who's shaking or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from BRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just all spam stuff you get in your emails. We thought it was some joke or that girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey. Now, oh, that's Luke fucking right, you get me? And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. When Rich Snobs gave you that face? <laughs> no wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them that does working with them does that, you know. <laughs> I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, and that mansion <laughs> Hey, you okay, <clears throat> Holmes? You look a bit shaky yourself there. And he really is pale. Paler than before at least. I can sense the gears turning in his head on overtime. Suddenly he shoves a car shoves a card in my hand. 
Oh, on it, his name, Ashton Frey, and his number. But he has second thoughts as he grabs it from me and slips it into my pocket. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> you're pretty, you're cute, pretty boy, but I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me, if something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if anything seems suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is. Right. 999. Good. Anyway, I have to run. See you, G. The guy is quick on his feet, already up and at him as soon as the number leaves his lips. Watching him as he maneuvers through the crowd of other pub goers is enough to tire me out. Fast as he can, he's out the door and throws... Uh, excuse me, and throws a smile, and that's all we get before he's gone, just like that. Oi, what about your drink, boy? I'll put it on your tab then. Holmes boy always liked that, G. Pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'd put your drinks on the tab, on the tab too. Don't want you to spill your wallet when you look when you look like you're so close to spilling yourself. Yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll take a bit of a catnap here. Just for a sec or two. Go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. Alright! We're going to stop it right there. Boom! Let's check our journal. It doesn't seem like we have anything particularly new. Alright, yeah, it looks like pretty much everything is there. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot, though. We go back here, and then, boom, we can see that. So, I guess... Uh, goodbye, Ashton Isabella. Uh, what is today, anyways? Um, I cannot tell. I do not know. Hannah meets Zachary Steele. Okay, that's where we are. Okay, yeah, so we're on the 26th. The interior designer once again drank her frustration away at the crawl bar, yada yada yada, gave her her calling card. Mm. By her dream problem, the good excuse is I have not, have not seen it all. I've been trying to interview. Then there's this plan. Alright, huh. Alright, so we're going to go back to the main menu. Alrighty, guys. So, some interesting things. I'm still kind of on the fence about whether I want to try and see if I can fix. Luke and Hannah's relationship, or if I just want to go ahead and go with fixing, um, go ahead and hook up McCullough and Hannah. Because as far, now, to be fair, to play devil's advocate, we have not yet seen Luke's perspective on this whole thing, because all we have so far from Hannah is the fact that Okay, clearly their marriage isn't going well. Luke seems to be a bit distant. Maybe not the most openly caring guy. But she loves him. But because that love isn't necessarily being returned, she's obviously starting to be a little bit flirty with other guys, such as Zachary, right? So that will be kind of interesting to see play out. Because, again, I am kind of curious to see what Luke's side of this is. Because... There have been a couple of scenes that indicate that he may be more caring than he openly cares to admit. Um, but at the same time, we've seen him, like, openly cheating before. So, again, we're just going to have to play through his side of the story and see what it's all about. But, that is going to be it for this time. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video and tell me in the comment section below what you'd like to see me play next. If you enjoyed this video or any other videos or streams on my channel, any other videos or series on my channel, then I highly recommend that you hit the, yeah, the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you'll be notified when a new one of those videos comes out. Anyways, that's it from me. See you in the next one.